So, one thing I'm working on cooking currently is kind of like a chicken... I don't know. I guess it would be a cross between maybe chicken noodle soup and chicken and dumplings. Usually I make this and I actually add noodles to it, but my boys have requested me not to do so today. So what I am currently doing, and my phone was charging so I wasn't able to really record this sooner, um, is I added bun butter with the onions into this and I used a whole large yellow onion. And then I cook the onions for about five minutes. Now I'm using propane, so even on low heat, it cooks very fast compared to my old electric stove. So I definitely see the difference there. And for a long time, I was cooking on a hot plate because we were remodeling the old house. So adjusting to propane has been a big difference for me. Um, one thing is that it cooks much much faster so you really have to be on top of it because even on the lowest setting it's pretty warm i would say it's a good medium medium high on compared to an electric stove or hot plate so i let the onions cook down just a little bit just so they weren't super crunchy but before they really started to caramelize because my boys sometimes like the caramelized taste but i got this butter from the grocery store it was pretty good price for a two pound block of butter, but it's extremely rich and has a very strong flavor, which we're not really used to when it comes to butter. We're used to more mild flavor because a lot of times we will buy heavy whipping cream and then make our own butter and buttermilk out of that. So that is kind of one thing to be aware of is if you're sensitive to certain flavors, be careful what type of butter you use. Now, as you know, I love H-E-B, so if I would have had some of that H-E-B garlic herb butter, then that is something I would have used because I love the flavor of it, but I did not. So what I'm doing is, so if you hear a lot of loud, what sounds like yelling in the background, it's not. My boys are in opposite rooms playing the same game and they're talking across the hallway to play the game together. And it's actually quite loud because the house is not massive and everything echoes a lot so anyways what i did was add the onions in with this butter and kind of saute it a little bit but saw before it caramelized i added paprika which is why you see this kind of golden color and then i don't i can't tell you i probably added like a full tablespoon of paprika because we really like it and it's going to even out but i really just season everything to taste so you have to decide what smells and tastes best for you because I'm a little more sensitive to like salt and pepper but not so much to other spices so I'll probably add a ridiculous amount of spices compared to what someone else would add but a lot less salt than other people would add and for me that's a little bit of a dietary restriction too and I also bought some chicken this pack is actually chicken tenderloins and I bought them from Costco because they were vacuum sealed and I really liked that about them. Now, they were a little, I guess the price is okay, but if you're used to maybe buying, like I like to buy at Jovi's a lot when chicken goes on sale, so for me it was a little more pricey, but it's $3.79 a pound, so depending on where you're at, that's not gonna be too bad. It's boneless and skinless, which is nice, one of the big issues that I have though, especially having my daughter who has a little bit of issue chewing and so I didn't want her to choke, is that there are tendons in every one of these chickens. So I basically used the knife to scrape that out and put it in here, but I ended up needing only two of the three packages. So I'll probably go ahead and pre-cook this tonight or use it in some kind of meal tomorrow. Because of my own dietary restrictions and everything going on, I am really learning to cook a lot with chicken and a lot with ground turkey just because I don't want to cause myself to have further health issues, especially when it comes to my heart. So I'm kind of slowly strolling away from um, red meat products. Not that I don't eat them, because I do. I love a good steak. I like making homemade breakfast sausage. I even like making homemade sausage or boudin, 
but I just want to be mindful right now, especially with the chest pain issues I had a couple of weeks ago. That was really scary and it felt horrible, so I don't want to risk that. So here are a couple ideas um, that I'll be showing throughout the next few weeks or so. And one of them is definitely going to be this mill. Okay, so with that being said, I scraped the meat from around the tendon and put it in here. I only needed two of the three packages now. These chicken tenderloins, chicken breast, and chicken tenders that I bought from Costco, all of them are sectioned off and they are vacuum sealed each into a portion and there are six portions for our family. We need between two and three portions depending on who's all over. If my younger three siblings are over, then we will definitely need all three. But right now, I feel like with these tenderloins, two is quite a bit. Um, this is a five quart pot. It is one of those enamel coated cast iron pots. And so this is a pretty good amount of chicken filling it. Now, if you are new to cooking, I just want to warn you, it could be difficult to tell if the chicken is done if you put the paprika in with the onion. So you can wait to add your seasonings until after you cook the chicken. It's not going to matter because what we're going to actually do with this is add water into it and let it boil until it turns into a broth and then make add cream or milk to it and some flour to thicken it. So it's really going to be a lot like chicken and dumplings. It's just going to have a little more things to it because I'm thinking because I really want to maximize using the frozen vegetables that I grew in my garden last winter and start clearing it out for whatever I may grow this year. And also I want to eat healthy and cut cost. So for me, that's going to be using whatever's in my freezer. I'm going to be adding kale to this, but if you know that I really love Agasan Farm products and with the big move, we haven't had time to really go to the grocery store and buy a lot of stuff. So that means I'm going to use some of those dehydrated products. For me, that's going to probably be the red and green bell peppers, just a small amount because my husband is not a huge fan of the strong bell pepper flavor. And then I'm going to use some shredded carrots from Agathon Farms. And that will add a little bit of something else. Now, if I had fresh carrots, I would use them, but we tore through those carrots that I made. I do have some diced carrots in the freezer from my garden, but I feel like the large carrots would probably freak my kids out a little bit because I have one that's a little weird about carrots right now and stuff. He really prefers if I can carrots. I don't know if he likes the carrot texture, but not so much the fresh carrot flavor or what that's about. So what I'm going to do is probably use some shredded carrots if they will let me. And then I will crunch up some of that frozen kale. It's really easy to just crunch with your hands and I get, it just mixes well and gets kind of soggy. So it makes it easy to eat and break down into soups without it being overwhelming in the flavor or too much large green chunks, which if you have kids like mine may freak them out a little bit. Um, I know my daughter especially does not like green vegetables, the taste or the appearance of them. So I try to get creative with that. Now, this is pretty much done. But like I said, if you're new to cooking, seeing the paprika may make it difficult to tell the chicken's done because it does kind of give it an orangey red hue. For me, I would recommend cooking it without it until you really learn how chicken's supposed to look. But it'll basically go from the pink raw look to a white color when it's done cooking. Okay, so if you don't know what Agasan Farms is, so uh, I'm not good at pronouncing it. I'll just pronounce it the way I do. It may be wrong. So if you don't know what this brand is, essentially emergency food products that have an extended shelf life, they are either dehydrated or they are freeze dried. So some of my favorites are the creamy wheat cereal, diced carrots, but I have shredded carrots, that's what I'm using in this recipe. We have peanut butter powder, they make full meals, they even make meat for it. And this right here is what I was talking about, about the bell peppers. So essentially they are emergency or extended shelf life foods. 
and if you buy them on sale on Amazon or any other websites, I have mostly seen them on Amazon, then you can get a good deal and it's great not just for long-term storage but for any kind of emergency pepper preparation for us that means hurricanes and power outages so this is the dehydrated carrot product and what it looks like i love these containers i also got them off amazon i may link them below and you can decide for yourself if they're good for you i know especially family members have asked about these in the past so I will try at some point to link them or make a post on my YouTube page about them so that you can see them. No, I'm not affiliated with them. I just absolutely love this product. Um, let's see. I am not seeing the bell peppers right now. And as you can see, I kind of have everything up on a shelf like this. My previous home had a huge shelf that we custom built to fit all of these containers, but this one does not. If you want to go look at my past videos, you will see what I mean by that. I see the popcorn and all of that. I do not see the bell peppers, which I know I have some in a container somewhere that's already open, but I'm not going to search everything because I'm tired and I have a ton of schoolwork to get done. So I'm just going to say, okay, no to the bell peppers. And I'm guessing this is just going to be more like chicken and dumplings that just happens to have some carrots and green vegetables inside of it. So the next thing that I'm going to do is add water to this. I have a quart jar full of water. I love jars because I've learned how to measure with them over the years. So one quart does not look like enough. So it looks like I'm going to add at least two quarts of water to this and the chicken is already cooked the onions will be fine i will wait and allow this to boil for at least 30 to 45 minutes boil it down and concentrate and that's going to make the chicken like broth that we're later going to add some of the dehydrated carrots and the chopped up greens to the important thing for me is to wait till towards the end to put the greens because they do since they've been frozen tend to get a little slimy and soft if they're in large chunks and put in too soon. However, I do chop them up well enough that it doesn't seem to matter just crunching them with my bare hands. So we'll see how that works out. But right now I'm just going to pour in a second quart of water, see if that's enough. And if it is, put the lid on and let this boil for about 30 to 45 minutes or until it's condensed a little bit. And I think it has a nice broth flavor. Now, if you want to, this is a perfect time to add maybe some garlic powder and pepper or whatever seasoning that you usually like to season your food with. For me, I'm going to wait because it tends to get a little strong as it boils for longer. So I did not think to mention this, but the reason I'm only putting two quarts of water and not filling it all the way up to here is because later on when this condenses and makes the broth, I'm going to add milk. Usually I'll also add cream or half and half, but I do not have that. So milk is what we have on hand and milk is what we are going to be using. But right now, all I'm going to do is go ahead and put this lid on this pot and allow it to go ahead and simmer down. Ignore the stove. I know that it's messy, but guys, I'm cooking. So that is what happens when you've been cooking all day long. Okay, so I'm hoping that this, the way I have this, does not end up making the video look weird when I put it together. I think I fixed the problem of it doing the really skinny screen, but I'm not for certain. Um, it does look like my phone is struggling to focus a little bit, but anyways, usually I add flour into a mason jar like this, because if you don't know, flour does better when you mix in some cold water into it. I apologize for the interruption. The boys are getting loud. Hang out in the back. There are three of them. They get a little loud sometimes. So sometimes I have to pause the video and quiet them down a bit because it gets loud back there. And if you know boys playing video games, they can be quite entertaining. Today is their day of relaxation, so that's why. 
so this is the flour and the reason that I don't just pour the flour into the pan is because it actually will clump up together and then all these huge clumps of weird flour and dough floating around the pot which is not ideal. Usually I like to take a larger mason jar, add how much flour I need to thicken it. That's usually anywhere between three-fourths a cup to a cup of flour. But today I'm going to pour it into this bowl and the reason I'm doing that is that I fully intend to use this bowl to make biscuits to bake in the oven to go with dinner. So what I'm doing now is adding eight ounces of water up up to this line is the eight ounce mark and I'm filling that with water. And this is nice cool water. It's not cold, but it's not really lukewarm either. And then I'm just going to mix it together with this. And at mixing it with the water really allows it to mix well. And then when you pour it into the pot, it's well mixed. Now, usually I would like to use a whisk to do this, but I have no idea where my whisks are because they are packed away um, due to the move. So this is kind of what I have to work with. And honestly, it's not working well on getting the lumps out. So my plan is to get my KitchenAid mixer attachment and use that instead to whisk this together. Actually, that would probably be a much better idea being for KitchenAid mixers. Which, by the way, we use our mixer for everything from making butter and whipping cream to making bread. It just saves a lot of effort. Um, used to, when I first started home studying, I thought, oh, I need to get back into the swing of making everything by hand. Which, yeah, it's cool to make everything by hand, but... It is difficult and when you have a big family and you live in the modern world and you're busy, it's just not necessarily realistic. So I've mixed this together fairly well, but I'm going to go ahead and add another half a cup of flour because I don't think this is enough and it's just relative. You can see it's not perfect. So I did half because that is a one cup measuring cup. And I'm just going to mix this in again. I just looked at it and it just wasn't quite thick enough. So I'm going to first just mix it together with the spoon. And then I will whisk it together with this. Now if you have a whisk, absolutely use your whisk. Like I said, mine is packed away somewhere. I have no idea where it is. So it kind of makes a little bit thicker mixture. You can see kind of like pancake mixture, which by the way, I actually know people who do use pancake mixture to do this. Now, the cool thing is that, remember the Agasan Farms products I showed earlier? They actually make freeze dried and dehydrated meats such as chicken, breakfast sausage, hamburger meat. They have a black bean one for black bean burgers that is Oh my goodness, amazing, especially when you fry it in, say, olive oil or avocado oil. It is the best black bean burger ever um, as far as pre-made dehydrated meals. And so you could literally use all of their products to make this, and it would be really good in, in an emergency situation and I'm not talking about the end of the world, guys. I'm talking about we live in Hurricane Central. We have tornadoes, we have hurricanes, and we can go months without power. So those types of situations, flood events, you name it, it's really nice to be able to use products that you have on hand. And this is just one of those. Now, of course, if you want to prepare recipes that you can use, if the doomsday finally comes, guess what? These will also work well for that because it's all with the Agasan Farms or any other product that's freeze dried that you wanna use. So it works really well. Okay, so one thing that you have missed because I do not have a way to set up my phone to show it off is that I have gone ahead and added milk to this. I did not measure it out, but I wanna say, I would say it's a good pint and a half of milk. So two and a half cups of milk. You do not have to be perfect with it. And that's what gives it this 
beautiful color. What you're seeing on top is the butter and paprika mix when I cook the onions and chicken together. So that's why it has kind of that oil presence on top. And then around here, this white is just where the milk has boiled a bit in this mixture. So it's really nice to have. Now I'm going to go ahead and add the flour into this. Okay, so the flour water mixture has been added into this and now I'm going to mix it in. The reason I mixed in the water and flour is so that it didn't clump together and it would slowly thicken up. So it's not immediately going to be thick like it should be. It's just going to slowly thicken while it's simmering. Now this is where if I'm going to add noodles to this, I will often go ahead and add them now and then do my dumpling mix because noodles I feel make it go a lot further but my boys have specifically requested that I not do noodles this time and then I do it more like a chicken and dumpling mix. So what I'm going to do is add my dehydrated carrots which is a personal preference. I know plenty of people including my parents and grandparents that would definitely never do that. Okay, so now I'm just going to grab it by the handful instead of measuring it out. Really, I'd say about a fourth of a cup of dehydrated carrots is more than enough. I don't want to add too much because, like I said, one of my kids is kind of picky when it comes to carrots. And the carrots I'm adding are those dehydrated carrots from Argosone Farms that I showed earlier. I really like that and the reason I'm adding them now instead of at the end is because this gives them time to reconstitute and the liquid in this mixture will cause them to rehydrate and they will not be crispy, they will be nice carrots. So I actually had to run away down the hallway and shut the bedroom doors because like I said, the boys are playing in opposite rooms from each other. So instead of talking into the mic, they are just basically yelling at each other. Not really yelling, just they talk loudly across the hallway from each other and it is just too loud. Uh oh buddy, pick it up. Be careful. Thank you. And so... This is really starting to thicken up pretty well, as you can see. It actually looks still kind of thin, but for me, I can tell that it's starting to thicken up. It actually looks really good. And now I personally like to add my seasoning about this point. You can add it really at any point. I do not measure them out. I just, I know what we like at this point. So I need to remind you that this pan is a five quart pan. So, it, technically it's a Dutch oven. <laughs> I don't know why I keep calling it. I'll call it a pan, I'll call it by the wrong name. So it's five quarts, so that's why I'm putting quite a bit of seasoning into it. If you ha are you making a little bit less, have a smaller family, or if you want to make this ahead, it actually freezes really well. It stores in the fridge pretty good too. Now I'm adding some garlic powder. So you can portion this out to eat over a few day period or you can go ahead and freeze it. I often freeze meals in containers, making sure to leave a few inches for headspace because it does expand. And then I defrost it the day before by setting it on the counter um, or if it's warm outside and I want to cook it in a few hours, I will just set it outside because Texas heat will defrost anything. It will make people feel like they're melting. So that's just a really good way for me to defrost things without exerting any energy and without it filling up my sink or being in my way. So this is not a canning safe recipe. You cannot can this recipe. Please do not. And it, that would be dangerous. There are recipes where you can can soups and stews and thing of, things of that nature. But I always recommend finding a safe canning recipe. I definitely cannot tell you how to can this, especially with milk in it. So this, it, that is why I just freeze it. Now you could quite possibly um, freeze dry this or dehydrate it. 
if you understand the principles and times behind doing that. But that is not something I'm going to be doing right now. This is simply for fresh eating and for my husband to have lunch for work tomorrow. If you're wondering why I continue to stir this mixture, it is because even on a low setting, the propane stove cooks really quickly. And so that is why I continue to stir the bottom so that it, the flour does not stick to the bottom and it will not burn. As you can see, it's thickening up really, really nicely. And so now is the perfect time for me to go ahead and make our dumpling mixture, which I am not going to roll out dumplings and cut them. I'm simply going to take some flour and mix it all together and drop it in here. Actually, I think instead of taking flour, I'm going to take the biscuit mix, which is also an Augustan Farm product, and I'm just going to leave out the baking powder and mix that together and drop it in here to create kind of like a drop dumpling, which you can really just use flour and water, and if you like to season your dumplings, you can add some seasoning, but since everyone in my household has such different tastes, I don't generally tend to season the dumplings. I just let them add whatever seasoning they want into their bowls, um, which generally is some kind of spicy flavoring. Now, I am going to mix this together and when this video finishes and it is up on your TV screen, you may see that the bowl looks sideways. That is because I am filming from the side to do this part. So just in advance, understand I'm filming from an awkward angle and I don't know how it will translate to television, but I can tell you that if you just follow what I'm saying, you should be perfectly fine. Now, I have the biscuit mix in these containers because once again, they are amazing. Previously, I had an issue with pantry moss. It was awful, and that is why I keep everything in sealed containers now. So, if you buy the Augustan Farms biscuit mix, it does have directions for how you add the water and baking powder on the back. I do not have it memorized. I just have a roundabout idea of what works because I've used it so many times. Now, because we use such a large amount of dumplings, I'm going to use an entire cup of this biscuit mixture, and then I'm going to add water to that, which is going to, I'm going to start with a cup of water, because you really want it to be a little bit thicker, and so that's why I'm only using a cup. So I am whisking this in and then I will look at it and see what I think. I actually don't know why I only use one cup because there are quite a bit of us and I'm not using noodles so I actually need more than usual. There we go, there's a second. So I have used two cups of the mixture and now a second cup of water. When I was a kid, my parents would often, when they were in a hurry, sometimes they would roll out biscuits, sometimes drop method, but a lot of times they would just cut biscuits up from a can and put it into the dumplings. You can also roll them out with some flour to give it a better texture. The reason I don't use pre-canned biscuits is because it has a doughy texture and I'm kind of weird about textures when it comes to food and therefore I just prefer not to do that. So it's just a personal preference on what you like and what you prefer and that's really what it comes down to. So now you can see about what this mixture is still a little bit thicker than pancake mix. You can choose to make it thicker or thinner however you like your dumplings it will the thicker it is the kind of clumpier and um 
I guess, more doughy consistency that your dumplings will have. Thinner mix means that they will be thinner dumplings um, because they will have time to kind of stretch out before the heat cooks them. The big thing is that what happens is you put this into the pan and the heat begins to cook the dumplings before they reach the bottom and they float to the top. So that is what we're doing. So you can see how much thicker this mixture is. It's actually quite thick. And then this is true cobra rub. I'm obsessed with it, we all are. And we're gonna use it to season this. Be careful not to use too much because guess what? This has a sweet and spicy flavor to it. Mm -hmm. So in great concentration, it is spicy and also sweeter so too much and it's too sweet and you lose that good flavor okay so this is the point in time where i begin putting in the dumpling mix usually i use a spoon but everything is washing in the dishwasher which that is one thing that has been nice is to have a functioning dishwasher and i'm just gonna dump this in there I actually prefer them a little thicker. I wish I would have made the mix thicker, but it's really not going to matter because these things are going to cook so fast because the heat is up a little bit. This mixture is so incredibly hot. You can see that it's boiling. So these dumplings are going to set quickly and it's not going to matter. The reason that it matters if your mixture is hot is because if not, the dough will not cook instead it will break apart and instead of making dumplings or anything that resembles dumplings it will just make a mess and make your food thicker and thicker so that's why you definitely want to make sure that it's hot enough and thick enough that it will form some dumplings so you can see i'm doing this now it is good practice to periodically stir this around and check your dumplings so they don't stick together and make sure it's actually forming, but I am fairly confident that it is forming because I've done this enough. So that I do have going for me, but if you're new to cooking, this would be a great time to check it. Guys, I was not always great at cooking. I would even venture to say I'm really not the best cook now. I'm just trialing and erring and working hard to become better at it because that is what is important to me and to my family, but especially with gardening mm -hmm. and wanting to make good use of mm -hmm. my food. Wow, my hair's gotten really light, hasn't it? Sam took a picture of me cooking and I'm looking at it and my hair is actually turning gray, but it looks like it's turning blonde, which it is not. And I'm amazed at how light my hair has become over the summer, but that is age guys that is okay so you can see how the dumplings have formed there with the chicken and you can also see how the carrots are no longer dehydrated they have reconstituted which just means that they've soaked up the liquid and look at all these dumplings and chicken in here so that's what I was talking about about the dumplings forming and doesn't that it looked really good this is a very hearty meal which we are not big on hearty meals during the summer usually. We will spend a whole summer eating sandwiches, I kid you not, and salads, but I have basically run out of salad mixture. The salad mixture that I had was starting to get slimy even though we've been eating it every day. And I'm not currently growing salad because it is so hot and I need to go to the grocery store and get some, but I don't have any. so. We are making meals from scratch instead, and it is going to be a bit of a hearty meal. So that's a good example of the dumpling and what they look like, and I will continue to add them, but you see what I mean? It has thickened over time. The dumplings have formed. This would actually be fine, but since my family loves dumplings, they like having a ton of dumplings, I'm going to continue to add the rest of this mixture if you're not big on dumplings and having an incredible amount or a family that just try to pick all the dumplings out of your pot, then you may not want to put this many dumplings into your mixture. And that is okay. I recommend then only using one cup of flour or biscuit mix, whatever you choose to use, pancake mix, although your dumplings would be sweeter, 
and then you would use about one cup of water with that. So it's pretty much an even mixture unless you like your dumplings thicker or thinner, but this is definitely how I prefer to do it. And you can see there is no science to this. It is not perfect. It does not matter. It's just one of those things that you make quickly and easy. Um, it is nothing fancy or special. <laughs> now, I am used to chicken and dumplings. You know, you would think it's a southern staple, but culturally, it's not necessarily a thing. Different people from different cultures and different areas geographically don't eat these things. So, it is interesting to see the variation in the way that things are cooked. And it's really awesome. Now, my mom has a co-worker who actually does not like the way that we mix things like biscuits and gravy. She thinks it's insane that we eat flour on flour on flour. The gravy's made of flour. The biscuits are made of flour. And quite frankly, I can understand how that would be strange. It is a lot of flour. But it stems from a time where that's what we had to eat. And also, it's one of those staples where, especially if you grind your own flour or have access to different types of flour or oats, you can add more nutrition that way. So it is kind of interesting. Now, as you can see, this mixture is kind of getting full, which means it's getting thick. There's no room left to add dumplings. And that's why this flour is not sinking to the bottom. It's staying to the top. So I'm going to get, I gave it a few seconds so the dumplings would be enough that I could mix it without them breaking apart. And I think that is going to be it for what I'm going to add as far as dumplings. And I'm just going to give it a couple minutes to finish boiling. Look at the size of that dumpling. And that is it. Then I'm going to go ahead and go to the freezer and crunch up my kale and add it to that. That is the last thing I do. So I thought I had kale right on top of the freezer. What I actually have was turnip greens, which are actually getting frostbite. So you can kind of see that. Someone must be here. It's probably my husband because my dog is going nuts. So now I'm just going to mix the turnip greens that I cut up into this mixture. So you can see I kind of piled everything up here. These are the turnip greens. I went ahead and chopped them up just because the stems of these turnip greens are a little more difficult to crunch up like kale leaves because of the veins there. So this is what it looks like. It will not matter that they have some frostbite, but this is a good example of why I'm working so hard to work through these vegetables that I grew before they are damaged and it alters the flavor of it. So I'm just going to grab. Okay, so I have moved this into the pot and now I'm just going to stir it in. Now I have turned this off and removed it from the burner because that would um, make it way too thick. Anytime you cook with flour or thickener, it will continue to thicken as it cools. So it's careful. It's probably better to make it a little under thick so it will continue to thicken. And then that is it. We literally just mix in the turnip greens and they will heat up with the heat of it and it will keep them from being too cooked or soggy and this is what the mixture looks like it tastes amazing i've made this time and time again you get a little green vegetables in it some color with the carrots the paprika and what i use as chupacabra rub this, if I ever find a way to make something similar to this at home, I will because it does have more salt than I need. But you can also add salt to this. Like I said, I do not add additional salt to my food um, just because I'm really not supposed to have too much salt. And my doctor would probably not be happy with me. It does cause me to swell a bit. But I, did, I do add red pepper flakes in my own personal bowl so that it's a little spicy and it gives me some flavor. I really love red pepper flakes in everything. And so this is the final product and what it looks like. I absolutely love this. It is best in winter when you want something nice and hot and hearty. But as long as you have a good AC system, it won't be so bad. I do not recommend eating this if you plan on working 
hard or working outdoors, especially in the Texas heat, you will be exhausted. So thank you guys for taking the time to watch my video and listening to me go on about how I'm cooking this meal. I'm going to go ahead and make biscuit mix, but I'm not going to record that part just because I have a lot of work to do. My daughter should be waking up from her nap soon after her occupational therapy and my husband will be home so it's going to get very loud and I have so much to get done. So thank you guys once again for taking time out of your day to watch my videos and listen to how I do things and catch up on life with me. I'm so excited to have you guys be a part of everything going on here and our learning process. And I'm also learning so much from every one of you. So thank you so much for being part of this community.